Hello, my name is Daniel Montano, a.k.a. Mr. Feathers. I was asked by uh, Christian Sullivan, Sullivan at the uh, Ward Museum to answer a few questions for you guys. And maybe uh, well, I'm going to give you guys a little tip on, on what I do for uh, my pond frond carvings. Um, she sent me a question, uh, about four, four questions to answer, so I'm going to do the best I can to answer those for her. And I know some of you guys are at home right now, stuck at home, locked up, you know, because of this uh, virus going around, and it's unfortunate, but um, we have to do it. It's for our own safety, and it's uh, it's pretty serious. It's getting really bad, you know, by the day. Everything's shutting down. You know, we shut down the War Museum and the Ohio Show, which is, which is bad news, you know. It's never happened before, but we're going to do the best of it. Uh, question number one. When and why did you start carving? I started carving back in 1987 at National City Junior High, which is uh, San Diego County, 7th grade. I was 13 years old when I started. It was actually the uh, second semester of, of 7th grade. Um, I saw my friends carrying around duck decoys, you know, around campus, and I I was intrigued by it. And I asked one of my friends if I could hold it, and I took a look at it. So, you know, I thought to myself, hey, you know, I, could, I should try this. You know, I'm pretty sure I could do this because I've always been an artist, you know, since I was a little kid. I started drawing when I was five and I've always loved art. You know, it doesn't matter what kind of type of art it, it was or, or it is, but I've always been, you know, a big fan of art. It doesn't matter what type it was. But um, so I decided to join the, uh, the class and it was taught by uh, Arnie Irwin, who is a good friend of mine today and who is also my mentor who taught me a lot about carving you know and showed me the ropes about carving duck decoys and you know pretty much show me the basics of decoy carving so that's how i started you know and uh what about 35 years later i'm still doing it out of hundreds of kids that that took the class i'm the only one that's left doing it you know active and arnie taught the class from i believe 1983 to 1989 when that was last year that was you know in that uh, class so after that you know I kept up with it and still active today and I've been fortunate you know to uh, still be able to compete with my decoys and um, been very fortunate by winning quite a few ribbons you know blessing that way and I don't always win but you know I love to compete I'm a tough competitor I love it and um uh, the past few months, you know, maybe a year, I kind of fell out of carving just as, you know, personal reasons, life, you know, it happens to everybody. Got a little uh, <clears throat> burned out, if you would say. But I'm getting back into it, and uh, here I am. So, that was question number one. Question number two. What's a mistake you experienced in carving or something that didn't go so well according to plan? Uh, I think it was about back in 2006. Seven, I believe I entered a uh, decorative decoy category uh, which is a mallard uh, mallard decorative um, it was a it was a nice piece that I completed but I made the mistake of painting the base the underneath because I wanted to look clean and I wanted it to look pretty from underneath as well you know other than the top and I painted the bottom about maybe three days prior to the show the top was cured I mean the top was fine there was nothing wrong with the top you know but once they put the bird in the tank, it sat for about, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Um, one of the judges picked up my bird and noticed his fingers were full of paint. So he picked up my bird and looked underneath and, you know, the paint was all smudged from underneath. And he just went like this and he said, and I got disqualified. Out of all the places on the bottom where it didn't matter, it, I got DQ'd for it. Lesson learned, you know, you always let your paint cure. Before the show, you know, do it weeks before the show, and that way, and I'm sure everybody's experienced this. Everybody, everybody I'm sure, got DQ once for for wet paint, and that happened to me, and never again, you know. So that was a, a bad experience, and I learned from that, and you know, never again. So that was question number two. Question number three: What do you listen to while carving? I listen to 80s music just because it reminds me of when I started back in 87. So anything 80s, you know, alternative, you know, new wave, all that. I love it. Up to, you know, Coldplay today, uh, you know, Depeche Mode, The Cure, Morrissey, all that. I love it. I love Enigma, Anya, uh, electronic, you know, chill music. I love all that stuff. So that's what I listen to while carving. Any music, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh... 
Question number four. What's the best advice you ever got or ever gotten? Well, no one's ever gave me really good I mean, I've gotten advice before, but this I learned on my own. And that is to have a very clean piece when you compete. I mean, down to your your carving stage, you know, your prep stage, to your final stage of painting. Do the put in the time to sand. Everybody hates sanding, but you know what? That's the best thing you can do prior to paint is have a beautiful body, uh, just like a car, but a beautiful body work. It's very essential you do that. Um, sand every nook and cranny. Overlook it. You know, put a spotlight to it. And see where your dents or your your low spots and high spots are at. All your little crevices. Check all that. You know, down to 320 grit and sand and sand and sand. I can't stress that enough. Everybody hates it, but I I love sandy. And you'll see in my palm fronts how smooth my palm fronts get. And that's I mean that's a beautiful canvas right there. Ultra smooth for a beautiful paint job. When you paint, don't cake on your paint. Use a lot. Of, if you're using acrylics like I do, I don't know about oh I don't use oils, but acrylics use a lot of water. You know it'll thin out your paint, layer your paint. That way it doesn't look caked on. And I just can't stand looking at a piece where it looks like you painted it with you know it's just it, it's thick. It looks like caked on. It's just it's not good. Well, if you do vermiculation, make sure lines are nice and tight. When you're burning, make sure your lines are nice and tight and clean and don't cross hatch your burning lines. I mean, all that, all that's going to matter. It doesn't matter if you paint like Jet Brunet. If your body's not clean, you're going to see that. And this is going to be awful. All that underneath stuff that you don't see, when it's not painted, you're going to see it when you put paint on top of that. So you have to go back, maybe redo it, maybe go back and sand some more. It's just a waste of time. Keep your pieces clean. Keep your eyes clean. Make sure you get all that paint around the eyes. You get, you know, use a Windex, acetone, whatever, with the Q-tip or whatever, and clean your eyes really good. Um, your paint has to be, you know, spectacular. It's got to be super, super, super clean. That's, I mean, that's number one. If I see a piece out there that's just dirty, your paint is just smudged on or caked on, or you overpaint, you can tell right away when someone overpaints. I mean, less is more in that situation, you know, just some clean lines. Uh, you know, when you're airbrushed, you know, try away, try to keep away from your, your overspray, you know, um, when I airbrush, I use the, uh, an airbrush for base coats. And I come back with a high with a hand brush, and I and I do away with that that overspray look, so it doesn't look like it's airbrushed. So nothing worse than seeing a bird that looks like it's been airbrushed, you know, with stencils and stuff, and it's just overspray everywhere. That's that's no good. So very important. Keep your birds uh, super clean. Can't stress that enough. Um, uh, and it's going to help in the long run. All the top winners, if you look at their pieces, their, their paint jobs are just spectacular, super clean. I mean, it's, it's it's a rule number one for me. All right, so that was question number four. Number five, it's, it's not a question, but it's a tip that I'm going to give you guys on palm fronds. And what I use to prep my birds, or as a sealer and a, and a primer, I use Krylon primer gray ultra flat and the reason i use dark gray because on a dark surface you're uh, able to see all the imperfections all the light scratches you know all the all the bad stuff it'll pop up on a dark color versus a white color you, you really don't see it and on a dark color you see all the you know all the dents and stuff that 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 are left behind so i use primer which you know a sealer primer <clears throat> and i light i give light coats base coats um i pretty much use a whole can on a bird and i sand in between with uh either 320 grit sandpaper or four out steel wool after uh after every coat wait about 10 to 15 minutes you know light coats and then just you know steel wool it get off the roughness off blow it all off and again give it another coat all the way around even coats don't overdo it don't load it up if you do load it up and you see a drip or something, just leave the, leave, leave the drip alone. Once it's dry, you can come back and sand that up. This primer stands real easy. So light coats, 15 minutes, 20 minutes in between coats. And once you're done and happy with it, you know, as you can see on, on my front here, this is what I'm working on right now. It's ready for paint. This is a tough to duck. There are no imperfections. It's ultra smooth. I mean, it's just perfect. No scratches, no nothing on this. You see that?
and I'll use up to a whole can and so I'm happy with it. And the final coat you really don't have to sand. The final coat and you know prior to that everything should be ready to go. It should still be a final coat, just give an even nice finish all the way around. And last but not least, always wait up to five days for the primer to cure. Another mistake I, I did in the past was I loaded up the coats, you know, I was in a hurry to finish. It was it was a hot you know summer. And uh, I thought it was dry. It was dry to the touch, but believe it or not, inside, underneath, all the fumes and vapors get trapped in. And the more layers you put, the more they get trapped in, and it becomes really thick. And with time, if you rush it and you don't let it cure, and you paint, and you paint it, and give it a nice paint job and everything. Once you put that in the that bird in the water, and the sun hits it, it's gonna crack like an egg. So. Be patient with your coats. Be patient with, with the primer. Don't get happy with it. I know it's 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 a frustrating to wait, but it's worth the while. So give it about a week if you can, at the most, you know, at the least, and um, and you'll see you'll see the results. Well, here it is. It's up to Doug, ready for paint. And I'll be painting this probably Friday. I'm still waiting for for this to cure up. And depending where you live, I know the East Coast is really cold, but over here. Sunny San Diego, it gets warm, so maybe start painting less than that. Maybe maybe by Wednesday I'll start painting, but but here it is, nice and smooth. Krylon primer, and I've been using this since you know when I started carving palm fronds. This is back in 2007, and I see a lot of great ducks out there prime, which is a good sign that you guys just follow my work and, and and listen to what I'm telling you guys to do. And that's great. I appreciate you guys following my work, um, and that's about it. I hope this guy's helped you out, helps, helps you guys out a little bit, and um, stay safe out there, wear your dust mask, try not to go out, you know, wash your hands, be safe, do it for everybody, do it for yourself and your family. Alright guys, God bless, take it easy.